what do you think, how many alien civilizations are out there? Ask Robin Hansen. He has this lovely grabby aliens paper, which is the uh, more or less the only argument I've ever seen for where are they, how many of them are there, based on a very clever argument that if you have a bunch of locks of different difficulty and you are randomly trying a keys to them, the solutions will be about evenly spaced, even if the locks are of different difficulties. In the rare cases where a solution to all the locks exist in time, and then Robin Hansen looks at like the arguable hard steps in human civilization coming into existence, and how much longer it has left to come into existence before, for example, all the water slips back under the, uh, the, the, under the crust into the mantle and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and infers that the aliens are about half a billion to a billion light years away. And it's like quite a clever calculation. It may be entirely wrong, but it's the only time I've ever seen anybody like even come up with a halfway good argument for how many of them, where are they? Do you think their development of technologies, do you think their, their natural evolution, whatever, however they grow uh, and develop intelligence, do you think it ends up at AGI as well? Something if like there, that. if it ends up anywhere, it ends up at AGI. Like maybe there are aliens who are just like the dolphins, and it's just like hard, too hard for them to forge metal. And you know, this is not, you know, maybe if you if you have aliens with no technology like that, they keep on getting smarter and smarter and smarter, and eventually the dolphins figure, like the super dolphins, figure out something very clever to do given their situation, and they still end up with high technology. And in that case, they can probably solve their AGI alignment problem <laughs> if they're like much smarter before they actually confront it because they so- had to like solve a much harder environmental problem to build computers. Their their chances are probably like much better than ours. I I do worry that like most of the aliens who are like humans are, are, are you know like like a modern human civilization. I kind of worry that the super vast majority of them are dead, <laughs> G- given given how far we seem to be from solving this problem. But some of them would be more cooperative than us. Some of them would be smarter than us. Hopefully some of the ones who are smarter than and more more cooperative than us are also nice. And hopefully there are some galaxies out there full of things that say, I am, I wonder. But I it doesn't seem like we're on course to have this galaxy be that. Does that in part give you some hope in response to the threat of AGI that we might reach out there towards the stars and find No, authors. if they if 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 the nice aliens were already here, they would like have stopped the Holocaust. You know, that's like that's a valid argument against the existence of God. It's also a valid argument against the existence of nice aliens. And unnice aliens would have just eaten the planet. So no aliens. <laughs> You've uh, had debates with Robin Hansen that you mentioned. Uh, so one particular I just want to mention is the idea of AI foom, or the ability of AGI to improve themselves very quickly. Uh, what's the case you made, and what was the case he made? The thing I would say is that among the thing that humans can do, humans can do is design new AI systems. And if you have something that is generally smarter than a human, it's probably also generally smarter at, at building AI systems. This is the ancient argument for Foom put forth by I.J. Good and probably some science fiction writers before that, but, um, but I don't know who they would be. Well, what's the argument against Foom? Various people have various different arguments, none of which I think hold up. You know, like there's only one way to be right and many ways to be wrong. Um, a argument that some people have put forth is like, well, what if intelligence gets like exponentially harder to produce as it, a thing needs to become smarter? And to this, the answer is, well, look at natural selection spitting out humans. We know that it does not take like exponentially more resource investments to produce like linear increases in competence in hominids because each mutation that rises to fixation, like if the impact it has in small enough, it will probably never reach fixation. So, and there's like only so many new mutations you can fix per generation. So like given how long it took to evolve humans, we can actually say 
with some confidence that there were not like logarithmically diminishing returns on the individual mutations increasing intelligence. So example of like fraction of subdebate. And the thing that Robin Hanson said was more complicated than that. And like a brief summary, he was like, well, you'll have like, we won't have like one system that's better at everything. You'll have like a bunch of different systems that are good good at different narrow things. Sure. And I think that was falsified by GPT-4, but probably Robin Hanson would say something else. 